It ain't no Trimble Yuma, but I think we can work with this. This is the Aya Neo 2S. I've never used the Aya Neo 2 or the Aya Neo 1 or any Aya Neo device at all. But Aya Neo was so impressed by my Trimble Yuma review that they sent me one of these. What's in this one? We've got an AMD Ryzen 7 7840U, 32 gig, holy crap, 32 gigs of RAM and a oh, two terabyte storage. That's insane. Actually, is that right? Hold on, I've actually got a cheat sheet this time. We've got a Radeon 780M, which is a very weird name to me. I read 780M and I immediately just think a mobile version of the Kepler 780 from uh, Nvidia. So that's odd naming. RDNA 3, pretty sick, pretty sick. Holy crap, the graphics is 2.7 gigahertz. That's fast as fuck, boy. Some fancy vortex shenanigans going on inside. Very nice, very nice. No more heat accumulation, always cool. Yo, they've got a Wii in the background. Wait, that doesn't look like a real Wii. Looks like a paper mache Wii. That is weird. Actually, this is kind of funny. This whole entire panel right here is just like, yeah, it emulates the Wii. That is so funny. I would say they're not even trying to hide it, but they are slightly, oh, they are slightly trying to hide it. All right, well, this thing looks super premium. I'm really excited to check this out. Dude, look at the ridiculous amount of suction in this box. It's going. It's going. Okay, I don't want it to drop. Oh, what are you doing in here? Get out of here. Oh, we get an accordion. Whoa, what is that? LC and RC? What, what does LC do? I, what? There's three sets of shoulder buttons. Oh, it's got fingerprint technology. Another accordion. Oh, this is, oh, the, oh, now this is an accordion. Okay, I believe Aya Space is some launcher of some kind that probably helps integrate all the wacky stuff that this has, you know, like control mapping and all that. What is this? Instruction for tilting the patch. What? No tilting from the front of handheld front glass screen is not recommended to tilt. What is tilting? What are we tilting? That's in Chinese. Um, tear off the anti-scratch tape. Put the anti-scratch on patch location. Use picks to take out the right patch. Patch. What is the patch? I guess we'll find out. I'm so confused so far. But there she is. Please peel off this step mask before use. <laughs> oh yeah, that smells like technology. I don't want to take it off. It's a free screen protector. Can I just take off this part? Oh, now it's all kind of fucked up. Ah, whatever. We'll just take it off. Rest in peace, free screen protector. Wow, this is fancy. There's like chrome in there. Oh, it's a thickum. Okay, so I can already tell you guys that this thing is going to be a fingerprint magnet. The whole front is glass, which is like cool, but I don't like stuff that I have to touch all the time being like that. That's kind of annoying. Is this the patch they were talking about? No, the patch was on the side. There's two of them. I believe this is the patch. There's another one on this side. I think you gotta take those out to disassemble the unit, and I don't wanna do that, so we're gonna leave it. Okay, what else we got? An entirely unnecessary sheet of plastic. A very Apple-esque type C cable. I don't think this is actually blue, it's just a covering. Yeah. Yoink. Very cool. Holy crap. We got a big old honking AC adapter. What the heck? This thing comes with two type C's and two type A's? That's ridiculous. But why? I mean, that's cool as hell, but like, I mean, you know, why am I even questioning it? That's sick. I'll take it. It's a hundred watts. Pretty cool of them to give you such a fat charger. Very cool, very cool. All right, what's the last thing? We get a box of goodies. Oh, this is like international charger adapters. And we got some, I'm old and I don't know what these are called now, but back in my day, these would be OTG adapters. And then something, something, SSD. Something, something, SSD. Back in my day. Something, something, SSD. Back in my day. Charger adapters. Something, something, SSD. Back in my very day. Cool, very cool, very cool. Something, something, SSD. Back in my very day. Cool, very adapters. cool, very cool. Something, something, what SSD. What else we got? Back in my very cool, very cool. Something, something, what else we got? Back in my very cool, very cool. Something, something, what else we got? Back in my very cool, very cool. Something, something, what else we got? Is that the patch? It looks like the patch. 
After you replace the SSD by yourself or disassemble the handheld itself, the patch that comes with the handheld will be damaged. You can use this new one. Okay, so I'm guessing that to replace the SSD, or to take it apart, I guess, you have to take this piece off, and this piece is so thin that taking it off just kind of breaks it. So they give you a new one. I would have preferred that they just made it, you know, like two screws or something and then the piece lifts out. But I know that they're trying to go with like a screwless design here. So is what it is. Probably should have gone a little more function over form with that one, but you know, this thing is two terabytes. So I don't expect to even have to replace the SSD ever. And speaking of taking it apart, that's not something I'm gonna be doing because I will utterly destroy this thing if I do that. And if I did that, I wouldn't be able to show you guys how it works. So without further ado, let's do that. Two type C's is super nice to see on here. Oh wait, holy crap, there's three. Dude, that's sick. That's something that the Steam Deck is sorely lacking in my opinion. Ooh, LED joysticks. Neat. It's Windows time. Welcome to Microsoft. Let's see, do the controls work in the menu? No! Do they actually work and I'm just dumb because I didn't read the manual? Yes! I knew there had to be a reason they gave me these accordions. Oh, so these LC and RC keys actually do something kind of cool. It does a quick open, which opens the multitasking interface or something along those lines. LC is on-screen keyboard. I'm gonna remember that. He did not. How do I change the mode to use the buttons? Okay, well, let's just start pressing stuff. Okay, I don't think these do anything until like you've already set it up, unfortunately. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Making sure you have the latest. That's my favorite Windows 11 Jangrish, even though it's made by Microsoft in Seattle. So there's no reason that should sound so weird. We're gonna do the old bring a scam again on this one. No at thank you .com. No account for you. Get scammed. Bill Gates is shitting and pissing himself as we speak. How many no's does it take to set up Windows 11? One, two, three, four, five, six, six no's. <laughs> Hi. Sideways. While that is loading, just to give you guys a size comparison to this thing, I'm gonna put a few common household items next to it so you can get an idea. So I've picked a few things that I know everybody's gonna have lying around so you can really get an idea of this. Okay, here it is next to a first generation Zune. Right off the bat, you guys should probably immediately get the idea here. But if you're still not sure, here's a modern Blackberry phone with a keyboard. It's not quite in frame, so. There, we'll do one of those. And between these two, I'm sure you guys already got it. But just in case, here's your common Among Us sticker as well. These are pretty standard size, so I, you know, I, I really hope at this point that you've got it. But just because I'm the kind of guy that really wants to make sure that you understand what we're kind of working with here, here's one more. Uh, it's a Noctua fan, um, and I don't know what size it is. Okay, I now I know you guys have the picture, so. All right, and we are still sideways. Why does this always happen? Oh, 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 okay, we're good. Hello, Hello I players. Aya Space is for you PC handheld game content management software. Maybe you are not familiar with it yet. Don't three spaces t worry. Now let three spaces s make some simple settings. Okay, I understand that Aya Neo is not a native English speaking company, but I think like a tiny little bit more QC is in order. We are already helping you organize the local game data. Local game scan complete. Interesting, considering there's no games yet. Enjoy your game life. I do like that one. That's a good one. Don't don't change that one in QC. That's good. I like game life. Okay, we seem to be in some kind of launcher. Oh, so here's the resolution: 1200 by 1920. So unfortunately, with one X player being one X player, when I did the one X player two video, I had to send it back, um, which was weird because it wasn't even like a pre-production sample. So I can't compare it to that. But at the very least, I can pull up some specs. So the One X Player 2 that I had looked at was 2560 by 1600, which is a good bit bigger than this. I'm gonna add a graphic on the screen here that kind of shows you the difference between those two screen sizes, if they were the same DPI. Um, obviously they're not, but that's just kind of gives you an idea of how many more pixels there were on that screen compared to this one. But I'm also gonna let you guys know that that does not matter because in my One X Player 2 video, I kept talking about how that screen resolution was just ridiculous. On a screen that's this size, you don't don't need it that high. I think that 720p that you see on the Steam Deck is probably a little too low, just barely, and 1080p is probably about the sweet spot, and that's almost exactly what this is. This is basically a 1080p panel. However, I don't think this overlay program launcher thing is running at 1080p. 
I'm gonna try my best to show you guys on the camera, but it looks like the launcher is being rendered in like 720p or something. It doesn't look like it's the native pixel density of the display. And speaking of the Steam Deck, here is one. Oh my, these big chunguses don't leave much room in the frame. So this thing is smaller than a Steam Deck. The screen is roughly the same size though. Okay, so the height of the iNeo screen is roughly 95 millimeters, and so is the Steam Decks. Okay, so they might actually be exactly the same size. Yeah, okay, I just looked it up. They are exactly the same size. They're both seven inch screens. Thickness wise, the Steam Deck is coming in at about 19 millimeters, and the iNeo is a wee bit thicker, about 22 millimeters. Ergonomically, they're very similar. It's got a similar kind of contour on the back. I do like the Steam Deck a little better though because it's it's got more meat. It's not a big gradual sweeping curve around these handles like the iNeo. There's there's more to grip here. Whereas on the iNeo, it's a very, very gradual bump. And I wish they made it less gradual because now there's not as much to like to just hard grip onto, you know? When I'm having a heated gamer moment, how am I supposed to keep my sweaty hands on this thing? That's all I'm saying. Anyway, enough of the Steam Deck. He is merely a guest in the iNeo's home today. So let's kind of just explore around whatever this launcher is. ISpace, oh, this is ISpace, okay. ISpace provides you with a convenient function to adjust the display resolution, but this function may cause screen blurring depending on the driving situation? <laughs> Ensure that the official AMD driver is installed. Are there alternate drivers for this thing? That's kind of interesting. Pressed hamburger, I know. Oh, it didn't like that. Hello? Um, I know. I know! I swear, I know! I know how to get to the Windows desktop, but I don't know how to click this. Okay, you have to hold it, apparently. Microsoft Solitaire Collection just appeared? Okay, then. Looks like we can also choose the CPU profile here, which is cool. 11 watts, wow. 5 watts? Holy crap. I wonder how much of an effect that has on the battery life. Okay, so 22 watts is the max. We'll leave it as that. Optimize. Optimization completed successfully. <laughs> okay. Here's the fan speed. Pro mode. It's very quiet still. Wild. Let's do it. Go. I think this is just the fan curve. So that's not gonna do anything until we get in game. I will leave it as bow. What does more do? Check update. No update. Okay. Well, that's good, nope. I guess. It's already nope. updated. Nope. Okay, so here's Windows. And now that I'm getting a closer look at the screen, yeah, Aya Space is running at a lower resolution for whatever reason. It looks much more crisp on the Windows desktop. Okay, so they've included some useful stuff on the desktop. Okay, now there's useful stuff on the desktop. And just so I don't even have to interact with Edge, I have pre-downloaded Chrome and Steam. Later, loser. And I know some of you guys are going to be upset that I'm using Chrome for some reason. So just to nail home the point of how much I like convenience, I'm just turning UAC entirely off as well. Cool. We don't even really need that. And this is as far as I'm going to set up Windows for now, because eventually I will be installing SteamOS on this thing later in the video, but I do want to be able to restore it back to the Windows operating system here, just as you see it. So I'm going to take a system image back up, and while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about... Bringus Sticker Pack Zero. You'll get a standard issue Bringus Studios logo. I installed Steam Deck OS, and all I got was this lousy... <laughs> a pixel art 3DS using the homebrew launcher, the Wii homebrew channel, everyone's favorite dancing triangle batarong, and my personal favorite, an eight and a half inch holographic sticker that you can use to let everybody know that your computer sucks. You'll also be getting a random Among Us sticker since I have like 200 of these and they need to go. So if you want to secure Bring a Sticker Pack Zero, head down to the Etsy store in the description now. Okay, the backup is done. Let's go ahead and uh, fuck shit up. Okay, so right off the bat, I wanna try big picture mode. I wonder if this button or this button actually would work like the Steam button. Let's see. No. Whoa, that was fun. That was a fun sound. Do it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hold on, how do I make it louder? Maximum volume. All right, listen to this. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. That's such a fun noise. Okay, which one uses the Steam button, huh? Okay, I'm sure in the IONEO utility you could probably configure one of these buttons to act like a Steam button. I think all the quote-unquote Steam button is is just like the Xbox home button. Although I could be wrong about that. Actually, let's... Oh, okay, let's dive into that real quick. 
Oh, what in the hell did I just do? Huh? I did something. Oh. What's happening? I don't understand. All I know is that I pressed B at some point and it made a sound. Very strange. Okay, well, what I wanted to do in here was to see if I can configure one of these buttons to be a home button for Steam. I'm sure there's a way to do that. There was not. Master controller. Oh, this is fancy. Oh, wow. Oh, it's got gyro controls. That's cool. Okay, I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be to do what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so these are just your regular, like, start and select type buttons. You can't do anything about that. But they do have this one equals key down here that you can configure. It's set to show the desktop right now, but that's kind of dumb because this big old button right here also just shows the desktop. So I'm going to remap that to be the nope. Xbox button. Nope. 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 Um... Nope. Maybe not. Nope. Nope. Ah, you can't touch it, of course. Nope. Why, nope. why would you be able to do that? Save and apply. Okay, so now we can hit this to go back to the desktop, go back to Steam, and now I can hit this. Oh. That's not what I wanted. Get out of here, Xbox. Okay, so maybe the Xbox button is not the same as the Steam button. Okay, I'm gonna untick this box in Xbox settings, except save is not... Save is gray. Okay, I think it's saved. I don't know. Okay, that didn't change at all. Okay, maybe we can go to Steam and change it. Guide button focuses Steam. Let's try that. Nope. How is it opening it? Th those are both disabled. Dude, I genuinely don't know. Okay, my next idea. Tell Steam OS to use a different button to launch the menu. Maybe I need this funky driver, actually. Okay, let's try this again. Nope. Okay, so yeah, so I'm like remapping controls and it doesn't even detect this Xbox button picking up. That sucks. And I would like to take this opportunity to point out why I really don't like Windows on devices like this. I just want to map this button, dude. But Windows, being Windows, it's making that very difficult. Okay, I just tested on my normal PC, and Escape should open this. Okay, we will set it to Escape. What the heck? Dude, there's so much happening. Escape. Awesome. Okay. That works. And there's also a second button that you're supposed to have over here. The little quick settings button, but that's not gonna happen. Okay, so we have kind of a Steam Deck here. And this is good enough for most people, I imagine. Don't worry, we're still gonna install Holo ISO. And so if you wanna see how games perform in Windows on Steam Big Picture, that's great. But you're gonna have to look at a different video for that. Because in this video, we're installing Steam OS. Because I know things can get kind of strange on these portable devices when you're booting into different operating systems I'm going to connect a keyboard and mouse. Oh, that's ugly. Wow. How very stretched Okay, after a considerable amount of waiting uh, it appears it's doing nothing and I did a little bit of reading and I think the CPU GPU chipset everything in here is a little bit too new for holo ISO They haven't gotten the kernel updated for it yet So we're gonna take the approach of installing just regular arch on this thing and then installing steam and that'll get us like 99% of the way there. Oh Oh shoot disk part. What do you what the what did I open? Oh, I somehow made it into the recovery partition. Okay, don't do that. I really like this wide BIOS. Okay, we'll just put the flash drive right up there. Save changes, reset. And today's arch flavor of the week is going to be Manjaro, which unlike Holo ISO has the updated kernel. Okay, first things first, let's fix the uh, screen. Uh, okay, closer, I guess. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this Manjaro installed. The system is not plugged into a power source. I don't believe you. It's not true. Wait, the battery's not charging. What? I plugged in my Steam Deck charger just because it was there, but it's not charging it. Does this thing really need this 100 watt charger to charge? Oh, all right then. I guess the Steam Deck charger isn't good enough for this thing. Ooh, actually dual booting might be kind of cool. Yeah, we've got two whole terabytes to work with here. Let's see if we can dual boot. Okay, so we'll allocate Windows far less because most of the games are probably gonna be better in SteamOS. Manjaro, I guess, technically. Okay, so that should leave roughly 500 gigs for Windows, which is more than enough. Cool. Newer kernel is available. Not now, not important. Me and my homies never update our kernel. We just play video games. Steam says, fuck your global scaling settings. And we're back. Here's what I passionately refer to as kind of SteamOS. 
So it's similar to SteamOS in that we're in Arch Linux, and uh, that's pretty much where the similarities end. It feels more responsive than Windows though, for sure. Alright, well, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and install some games, and we'll see how this guy plays compared to our heavyweight champion here. I also would just like to note that the surface of this thing, when downloading games, gets really hot. Like, really hot. I was scrolling through my library to see what I should install, and I noticed my finger was kind of hurting, so I decided to measure the temperature, and it was like, I think, what, what was it, like 40, yeah, 45.6, so like 46 degrees Celsius? That's like 115 freedom degrees. That's pretty hot. Like, something you notice with the Steam Deck is that, yeah, it gets warm, but the surface of the screen never, like, hurts my fingers. Can't say the same for this. Actually, we won't be playing games, at least not right now, because for the life of me, I cannot get the controls working right on this thing under Manjaro. And what I'm talking about are these extra buttons and these two up here, they just, they will not work. I got one of them working, specifically this one. And here, here's what I've done to try and get this to work. So if we go under controller here, we go set up device inputs. Okay, so A, B, X, Y. This is like the same thing you do when you're configuring the input for an emulator. You're just kind of telling Steam which button and which axis everything actually is. And then we get to the point where it wants the guide button. I'm like, okay, press this. Doesn't work. That's fine. We'll use the little one. Oh, nope. That opens the desktop. That doesn't work. Okay, fine. We'll just use one of these top ones. Oh, neither of those do shit. So that just doesn't work, which means I can never access this menu when I'm in game, which is an issue because what if you want to change a setting while you're playing. You can't, because you can't bring up this menu. And yeah, you could go hit the desktop button and then go into Steam and fiddle around, but that, it's just lame. Like, we've got these buttons, let me bind them. And they didn't even work at all originally. Well, only one of four even works. But to get this one working, I had to install this package from this uh, GitHub repository here, which fixes the extra buttons on a lot of iNeo models, and actually all kinds of different portable computer models. And it says that the iNeo 2 is supported here, but this is the 2S. So I think that might just be different enough to make it not quite work. It says most of the buttons are mapped to the Steam shortcuts for various functions in the new gamepad UI, uh, including quick access menu, which doesn't work, guide button, which doesn't work, on-screen keyboard, which doesn't work, screenshot, which doesn't work, and escape, which doesn't work. Ironically, the only thing that works is return to desktop, which is not even listed. If you go to a keyboard tester and you press these buttons, look, it's doing stuff. It's doing something. So all of these buttons have like a keyboard shortcut that they're registering. So they they do something. So then I thought, that's fine. I'll just make my own shortcuts. Because KDE has a thing where you can uh, do a keyboard shortcut and it'll send a custom keystroke or whatever. And I was like, great, I'll just do that. But then when you go to configure the input for the shortcut and you hit the button, what is this? What is this bullshit? It doesn't work. It doesn't stick. It's only sending Windows and Control, not Windows Control and then a button. So, this is super frustrating. I've been told that Chimera OS kind of has a fix for this. A uh, note from me while editing here, Chimera OS had the same issue and I'll explain more about it in just a minute. So I'm gonna try that and honestly, if I can't get something as simple as these menu buttons working, I just straight up can't recommend Linux on this thing. Actually, while I still can't recommend Linux on this thing, it's not for this reason anymore. I posted an issue on GitHub with Chimera OS and a kind soul by the name of PastaQ Derek has updated handy GCCs for the 2S and the buttons are mostly working now. There's still a bug where every once in a while when the console starts up the controls will be frozen but you can just keep rebooting it until they work and then they behave just like they're supposed to on the iNeo 2. But I still don't recommend Linux on this device for a couple of reasons. You know how I said that you can keep rebooting until they work? Well that was kind of a lie because rebooting from the deck UI is broken, it just hangs here for you to hard reset it. And this is just the beginning though, because this thing has some other quirks that cause a chain of issues that you'll run into while using Linux. Obviously, Holo ISO is not working yet because it needs a kernel update, and until then, the best thing is Chimera OS, which doesn't seem to have great compatibility with Decky Loader. And why do we need Decky Loader? Let me show you some gameplay of Red Dead Redemption 2 at 720p low settings here in Chimera OS. Notice that the CPU wattage is super low, it's averaging like 7 watts. This chip should be going all the way up to 22 
too, but the TDP control is not working for this device in Chimera OS at the moment. There are tools like Ryzen ADJ and Power Control that can change the TDP, but they're both broken right now for this specific CPU that's in this thing, and Deki Loader is broken, so I can't install Power Tools, which is another program that can be used to change the TDP. So we have no TDP control. Not only this, but Suspend is also broken, so you have to hard reset it every single time it goes to sleep. So it's all just kind of fucked. And for these reasons, I'm just gonna have to come back to this thing another time when it's more supported in Linux. And aside from Linux, I don't really think I can recommend this device even in general. There were some fairly important issues that had nothing to do with Linux that materialized during my shenanigans with the 2S. Something was going on with heat, and it may have started causing issues with the screen. So remember what I had commented on earlier about the screen. I also would just like to note that the surface of this thing, when downloading games, gets really hot. Like, really hot. Like, something you notice with the Steam Deck is that, yeah, it gets warm, but the surface of the screen never, like, hurts my fingers. I think that actually may be causing a bit of damage to the screen. The whole right edge of the device has been just a little bit brighter than the rest of the screen. You can see that from my initial recording. This is already pretty annoying on a device that's this expensive, but it wasn't quite bad enough for me to pick up on it until after my first day of recording with the 2S. But now it seems like this side of the screen's brightness has gotten even worse. I emailed Ioneo to tell them that this was happening, and for full transparency, I'm gonna read both my email to them and their email back to me completely verbatim. Here's mine. Hello, I've been working on my video with the Ioneo 2S, and today it seems like the console has developed a backlight bleed from the right edge of the screen. I've attached an image of the device as it looks now. It was fine for a whole day until I had it turned off for the evening, and then when I came back to it, it had the backlight issue. While downloading games from Steam, I observed the console getting very hot, so hot that it became uncomfortable to touch, which I assume is not the intended behavior. I measured the temperature of the screen around 46 degrees Celsius at the hottest. This leads me to think that the screen damage may have been caused by excessive heat. I do want to note that my use of the device was primarily in Linux distributions. The fan was also certainly working. It was very loud while the games were downloading, so I know that the thermal management systems were doing their jobs, or at least trying to. I just wanted to let you know so that you can pass this information along to your engineering teams. If you would like me to mention any response to this issue from your company in my video, feel free to reply to this email and I will include it. Here's what Ioneo said. Hi dear, I thank you for your feedback. I'm sorry for this experience on our first collaboration. I value your issue and I checked with R&D and got the following response. Ioneo 2S screen brightness up to 500 unit. High brightness will bring the display effect comparable to OLED. In the screen picture you showed, it is the position of the backlight which will appear at high brightness. It is not light bleed. You can try to turn down the brightness, such as 50% or so. Also, it will be obvious in phone photos, but not so obvious when you actually look at it. This is due to high TDP and turbo boost being turned on when downloading, causing the CPU to be running at high load all the time. This is a Windows mechanism, so it is recommended to turn off turbo boost and lower TDP when downloading. In addition, in future ISBase 2, we will provide a dedicated performance configuration option for downloading so that you can avoid this situation when downloading. We hope that the reply from our R&D department will help you to solve the confusion. Also, we would like to ask you not to mention the above in the video, because in fact, what we gave you is a media device, not a mass-produced device. Thank you for your understanding. There is so much wrong with this response. Let's break it down a bit. They stated that in the picture I sent, this one for reference, that this is the position of the backlight, not light bleed. Despite the fact that I told them it was fine for a whole day until I had it turned off for the evening. And when I came back to it, it had the backlight issue. The position of the backlight does not change throughout the day. It's, it couldn't be the position of the backlight. That's just, that's not, anyway. Then they go on to say, you can try to turn down the brightness such as 50% or so. And I do want to note that this does help a tiny bit, but it's not gone. You can clearly still see that relative to the rest of the screen, the right edge is still too bright. The LCD was slightly flawed to begin with, and it's just worse now. Then they say, it will be obvious in phone photos, but not so obvious when you actually look at it. Which, as you can hear my comments in the video from earlier, which I took before I got this email from them, it's, ah oh man, it really doesn't show up all that great on camera, but it's definitely there. It is far more obvious in person. The camera really does not capture how much worse it's gotten. And I understand from their perspective, they obviously can't get their eyes on my device. All they've got is my phone picture. But again, if all they've got is my phone picture, their claim that it looks worse in photos is entirely baseless because they don't know what it looks like in person. And as someone who looks at it in person and in the phone photos, it's worse. And I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see it with your own eyes. So again, kind of a trust me bro moment. So trust me bro. 
And here's where I feel like they may have copied and pasted part of their response, because it makes no sense at all in the context of my original email. In reference to my statement that, while downloading games from Steam, I observed the console getting very hot, so hot that it became very uncomfortable to touch, they told me this. This is due to high TDP and turbo boost being turned on when downloading, causing the CPU to be running at high load all the time. This is a Windows mechanism, so it is recommended to turn off turbo boost and lower TDP when downloading. But that doesn't explain anything, and it's not even useful advice. I said in my email, my use of the device was primarily in Linux distributions. So there's no way that a Windows mechanism played a part in any of this. In fact, if I had to guess, I'd say that it was a lack of a Windows mechanism that caused this damage. My theory is that something that's baked into their Windows software is helping to manage the TDP and fan speeds so that it doesn't get this hot. To find out, I recorded the temperatures of the screen in Linux, where iNeo has no software that can influence the hardware, and I did the same in Windows, where their ISpace software has the granular control of TDP and fan speed. Here's what I found. In Linux, while playing Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p low settings, I measured the surface of the device near the right edge of the screen at 50 degrees Celsius. That is far hotter than a touchscreen should be getting. In Windows, with ISpace running, I set the CPU to 22 watts TDP and the fan profile to wild, which they say is the most aggressive fan profile for maximum cooling. The story in Windows is wildly even worse. The maximum temperature of the surface of the device at 1080p low settings, again in Red Dead Redemption 2, was a scalding 56 degrees Celsius, or 132 degrees Fahrenheit. We're at black car interior on a hot summer day levels of heat here. This is insane. This isn't the CPU temp. This is the part of the device that you're touching. I wanted to see how far you'd have to lower the TDP to get the temperature under control, but going down to 15, 11, or even 5 watts didn't dissipate any more heat because the fan would start ramping down with the lower CPU usage from 2900 RPM to 2500 RPM. Pretty wild of a fan profile, alright? I also just started to wonder if this thing just wasn't capable of charging and maintaining normal temperatures at the same time, so I repeated my test without the charger plugged in and I made sure to let it come down in temperature first. But the results here were not meaningfully different. The screen reached a peak temperature of 54 degrees. This thing just gets far too hot in both Linux and Windows. I think it only got to 50 degrees rather than 56 degrees in Linux rather than Windows, because the TDP control is not entirely working yet, so I don't think it's running as hard as it can. And let me put these temperatures into perspective for you. Electronicscooling.com lists that the maximum temperature for prolonged use of a device that is in contact with your skin should not exceed 48 degrees Celsius, and momentary contact of a device that's 56 degrees like this one will result in severe to maximum pain. The only thing stopping me from calling this device a hazard is that you're probably not going to be having prolonged contact with that exact area of the device. But wait a second, this thing has a touch screen. Oops. So if you were playing a touch-heavy game or browsing the web while your device was under load, then you very well could be experiencing prolonged contact with the screen at 56 degrees Celsius. It's possible that you actually could potentially hurt yourself with this thing. I don't think it's likely, because realistically, you'd notice the severe to maximum pain and you'd stop using it. But hey. It's gamers we're talking about here. No pain, no gain, am I right? To end their email, I and Neo said, We would like to ask you not to mention the above in the video, because in fact, what we gave you is a media device, not a mass-produced device. And if that's the case, then fine. Maybe the LCDs aren't finalized yet, and the final ones will be more heat resistant. Or maybe there's just a thermal issue in some of these review samples. Either way, if this is truly different from a retail device, I really should have been made aware of issues like this when I got it in. In the reviewer documentation that they sent me, they noted that there's currently a firmware issue that causes problems with sleep. So they're obviously capable of noting current defects. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that the hardware might actually not be meaningfully different from retail at all. And for the record, I have no way of confirming the hardware differences at all, other than with what INEO tells me. All I have is a media device. I can't compare it to a confirmed retail unit. But these devices are shipping right now, according to their Indiegogo page. Which means if they weren't already aware of this heat problem and how it can potentially affect the screen, there's no time to fix this before these devices get into backers' hands. So, not great any way you look at this. And you guys know that this is not what I typically like to do. I'm sorry if you clicked on this video expecting to see how the IA Neo 2S would run in Linux, and while I couldn't really show that off right now, at least you know why. There's not really a point in testing this thing any further when the software is not quite there yet. And the only reason I'm even doing this whole segment right here is because, well, I don't... 
I don't consider myself a tech reviewer. I just mess around with wacky computers and I bring you guys along for the ride. But I know I do inspire people to check out the things that I have on my channel sometimes, whether that be the Leapfrog or the Sega Alls or the One X player device that I looked at. And I know that like a bright spot on the screen isn't the end of the world. The handheld is still more than usable and not everybody's gonna be playing AAA games and getting their screen to hazardous levels of heat. But this is just in my single week of testing. I have no idea how this thing is gonna handle these temperatures in the long run. And like I said, I might be inspiring someone to go and pick this thing up for themselves. I mean, I don't think so because it doesn't run very good in Linux and usually that's why you guys click on my videos, maybe? I don't know. So it just didn't feel right to me if I didn't at least warn you guys about what you might run into if you do wanna get a device like this for $1,500, which in my opinion is a very unacceptable price for the issues that I'm running into. And I'm not talking about the Linux issues, that has nothing to do with this. $1,500 is way too much to pay for a device in need of a cooling system rework. And Ioneo's response to my email was a certified fail. And if that's the support that I'm getting as a media outlet, I can only imagine what you guys would have to go through as actual customers. It's neat, don't get me wrong, but it's not worth even close to $1,500 based on my experience with it and with I and Neo themselves. In conclusion, just buy a Steam Deck.